Good evening, everyone. Happy Halloween. Are you having a good time? I hope so. Getting yourself some good trick-or-treats? Yeah. I decided to do something a little different this Halloween. Last year, I did two react videos to some creepypasta rap battles. Yeah, epic rap battle parodies. And with Slender Man vs. Jeff the Killer and Eyeless Jack vs. Laughing Jack and a whole lot of other characters mixed in. I tell ya, for a parody channel, supposedly, that was a hell of a lot of effort. So I decided to do something equally creepy and equally nostalgic for me. React to some of Tat's top videos, particularly the top creepypasta ones. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty fun moment from my childhood, in year 12, in Town High. Look, I still got the school diary from those days. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. And if you are watching this, Tats, just know, you rock. You rule. <laughs> anyway, let's get to it. Just gonna turn out the lights. This video contains flashing lights, scary and creepy content, disturbing violent and graphic images, jump scares, pop-ups and sudden loud noises. Viewer discretion advised. You heard him. You heard the talking robot. So this is your last chance to look away. There's a lot to get through, so let's do it. Ever since video gaming became popular in the 70s and 80s, there have been creepy occurrences, hoaxes, Polybius. and funny creepypastas about the strange realm of video games. Yeah. They have been around for a long time. Yep, they sure have. Especially nowadays. This was back in 2014. This is now 2022, this recording. And no matter how much we say it's just a game, it still finds a way to creep themselves back into our mind and present us with an unnerving experience after the game is turned off. Now, yeah. we are giving you our list of the top 22 gaming creepypastas. Let's go! <laughs> 22 Unknown Format <laughs> Interesting title. Unknown Format. Uh, I'd like to see a book called Unknown uh, Print. Unknown Format is a creepypasta, which is about how the player rips his friend's game collection, uses a torrent to download and mount the games. However, when he switches the computer to a Japanese language, all the games he plays turns into a nightmarish vision of their former selves. Jesus! Off, this gameplay causes the player to start going insane by some of the imagery as in place in the story. This may not be the most famous or popular creepypasta you can find, but in my opinion, it's told in a new perspective that is not commonly used in creepypastas, and that is what makes it so perfectly haunting. I concur, my friend. I concur. 21. JVK 1166Z.ESP. <laughs> I'm sorry, but. <laughs> what a name. What a name. I'll definitely remember it in an hour's time. JVK is a creepypasta based on the game Morrowind. Morrowind. To this creepy pasta, if you start the game, it will crash. So you need to load it up in DOSBox. <laughs> when you launch the EXE, you'll start off in a new game where all the main characters have been killed, causing the game to be unbeatable. As you wander around the sandbox, you'll notice a weird in-game creature called the Assassin that follows the player. What is that? Watching you and doing generally. It's like he's got a head. He's got a butt for a head. He's a he's a literal butthead. Creepy things. If you stand idle, you'll lose health. And during the whole duration of the game, you will constantly be losing health. Once the player is dead, it's said that the assassin 
crawls all over the player's body and lets out a menacing screech. Bugger me sideways! Uh, don't do that again. You're gonna do that again, aren't you? The Hall of Tortured Souls. From as far back as the early 90s, oh, the wow. teams at Microsoft have been slipping Easter eggs into their software. Microsoft Office is very notable for this. Oh, the look at this! Edition, rudimentary flight simulator, pinball game, and magic 8-ball were hidden inside of Excel, Word, and Access, respectively. How about that? This takes me back a while ago. Also, Access? I don't remember that. And there's Excel 95, whose developers hit a creepy maze game called The Hall of Tortured Souls. The title alone would be bad enough, but they went further with the addition of low-resolution shots of the dev team plastered against garish red walls. Meh, that's not so scary. Just gonna take a just gonna take a quick break for a sec. All right, my audio is still good, my video is still good. Let's continue. 19. We are breezing through these. Super Mario 64. Damned. Damn. Super Mario 64 Damned is your standard creepy Mario ah! pasta with a few things Mario, right and how are you so scary all of a sudden? Basically, as the story goes, the player goes to the local game store and out of a pure nostalgia rush, he tries to get a Nintendo 64 and a few games for it. However, when he goes to buy I would it, too. the game owner gives it to them for free due to the complaints the old owners gave them about the game. They then head home and play it. And the creepy and gruesome events unfold. Oh, that's it? Oh, I was ho hoping we'd go into a bit more detail with this one. Hey! Free Nintendo 64. Can't put a price on that. Luna game. Oh, f oh no, not this one. Our brony viewers may know about this one. And and viewers like me would as well. Just saying. <laughs> the Luna game is a download that was uploaded by an unknown individual to the popular fan site Equestria Daily. When it was uploaded, it got a rather fast reaction to its scary jump scare content. Jesus! It down rather quickly. This led to EQD's new standard for submission. However, the damage was done, and the bronies who played are already scarred from the tormented soul of Apple Bloom that appears in the final splash page. We're all scarred, bronies. We're all scarred. Several more that have been released, but none have the initial scare factor that the first one had to offer. <laughs> get it away, get it away, get away, get away. Hero Brine. Ah, uh, yes. Hero Brine, also known as Him, is believed to be the ghost of Minecraft creator Notch's brother. Notch! Pictures of Hero Brine began popping up. In Although I hear that, uh, um, I hear some things about Notch, but yeah, let's not go into that. This is still 2014. In the late summer of 2010, the most well-known and most common rendition of the rumor is that a gamer, while in single player, found an NPC with a default skin. Oh God! White eyes. Following the encounter, strange occurrences started happening in this game such as man-made objects appearing that he did not create, trees missing their leaves, oh. two-by-two two tunnels underground lit with redstone torches and pyramids of Oh, stone redstone, of course. Soon enough, more and more Hero Brian pictures were appearing on forums. Uh. Pretty soon, Notch tweeted about the subject saying, Hero Brian isn't real in any way. No, I never had a brother. Well, there's a half brother that I never met, but he's not in the game. That seemed to raise further questions and more heroes. Surprising, no one. Continued to appear afterwards. The game developers even made a joke out of it and added 
removed hero brine at the end of some of the game's patch notes. Oh gosh, patch notes. Well, you just confirmed. Well, you've just validated that in the minds of the people who believed he was real. And there were people who believed he was real. Like, like, I know someone in high school. Her name was Shakita. She says she's encountered Herobrine in the game. And I told her this, and, uh, but, uh, nah, Chiquita, Chiquita's a very honest person, but I don't know. I just don't know. We may never know if Herobrine is a lost soul stuck in a video game. Oh, 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 fuck. Oh. It keeps us interested. I got jump scared by, by a Minecraft sprite. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Pokemon Buried Alive. Buried Alive is a supposed hidden code in the original. Oh, this Pokemon music! Versions. It replaces Cubone's mother as the boss of Pokemon Tower in Lavender Town. A battle would commence and show a horrific model of a ground. Buried Alive uses a number of high levels. So the battle can be extremely tough. If the player loses White the hand buried alive, he will exclaim about raw meat, followed by several lines of gibberish before proceeding to drag the player underground with him. The game over screen shows buried yeah. holding the dead corpse of the player. What was that? The theater. The game in question is indeed called The Theater and was developed by a company called Salida Software. Hey, they even have a brand. This company made learning softwares, so The Theater was probably meant to be some sort of educational entertainment game. The game was obviously never finished, probably from the lack of funding or the whole company going under. Players talked about this game coming out at around the Or the company was brought up by EA. Ha 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 ha. Same time as due. Back in 1993. Just like Kill Switch, it was very obscure and very hard to find. And those who did have it denied playing it due to the disturbing nature of the game. There was also a few bootleg copies, but none were like the original claims. The game was set in a first-person perspective, with flat sprites in a 3D environment that was extremely glitchy. The original idea was to select a movie from the posters on the wall, enter the theater, and play a minigame. But what's described in the story is what happens if you don't <laughs> select a movie. If you continue to enter the theater without choosing a movie, odd, Sometimes creepy things will happen. Glitching past mini games like this causes variables ah! <laughs> that weren't meant to, resulting in things appearing where they shouldn't. It is a very well written poster. This way, it sir. This way, please. Or a read. Not looking. I don't want to look. Yeah. <laughs> Kill Switch. Kill Switch is different from your standard creepypasta, in the sense that you can't reproduce it and you can't play it, but it's still pretty damn scary. Kill Switch, according to the pasta, was made by a small Czech company called Carvina Corporation. Ah, oh, Carvina. Yeah, I made a I made a shout out to this game and Carvina with a character, Rainer Carvina. Kill Switch in one of my videos from 2015 and then that continued going until 2017 but moving yeah. on as soon as the game was completed it erased itself so it couldn't be played again yeah on top of that there were only 5,000 copies ever made so the game is non-existent nowadays 
The game sounds rather fun with your choice of two different characters to lead through a haunted mine <laughs> that just so happens to be infested with the dead. But sadly, this pasta is simply not true. It was extremely well written by a professional writer with a tiny link to her site. Hey, Tats made this himself. Page. Made themselves. Yeah. Fallout 3. Number station. The Fallout 3 number station. Fallout 3? What? About one of the number stations in the game. On this station, the voice actor of the radio station host, Three Dog, is heard reciting strange numbers and sentences, such as, Have you watched my YouTube videos yet? I uploaded myself kicking bombs in the nuts. Followed by the <laughs> what? Two, four, one, six, one, two, two, four, two, zero, one, two. Other sentences said things like, The Queen has died today. Oh no! Oh no! No, no, no! In 2022, this hasn't aged very well. At all. At all. Oh god. The world mourns. As on days like these, we are all Brits. Yep. Followed by the whole world four, mourns. Two, three, one, nine, two, zero, one, four. When looking at the numbers closer, it is shown that they are all actually dates. The, the bottom one is 2014. Is that the date that I saw this for the first time? Is it? Most unnerving about this is one two zero five five two eight two zero one zero, or twelve o five May twenty eighth, two thousand ten. The date and time of the death of Gary Coleman. What does this mean about the other numbers then? It seems only time will tell. Uh, da, 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 da. Huh. Huh. Uh, nothing about this has aged. N none of these dates have aged yet. Hello, 2014. Yeah, that was a big year for me. 2012. <laughs> That's in ten years time. That's that's ten years ago. Misfortune. GB. Misfortune. GB is about a haunted game. Notice the inverted crucifix. Game Boy. The story behind the game is rather vague. You play the part of a little boy wandering around in a gothic building, while in the building. The player ah, means a strange there's there's a big heartbeat in the music. The devil himself. When the player meets this creature, a text box appears that says, "I exist." You're given the option to choose yes or no, and if you pick yes, then the creature responds with. You will eventually come across a room containing four small cabins, and in this room a text box will appear that says, If the player chooses the wrong cabin, the screen will cut to black, and then a high resolution picture of the creature will appear above a text box that reads, I Many who have played this game have suffered from depression, become jittery in everyday life, and even committed suicide. People say that the game is still available through the internet. You can go ahead and play it if you want. At your own risk, of course. You heard him. You heard him. Eleven. Tales Doll Curse. Oh, not this one. The Tails doll is a magical, oh. <laughs> demonic being that holds many gamers in its grip of fear. For those who don't know, the Tails doll is a hidden character in the video game Sonic R, hmm. an installment of the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. And one of the worst ones at that, apparently. Created by Sega Enterprises, Sonic R was the only game that ever had the Tails doll in it. The Tails doll looks somewhat different than its origin. 
It is, of course, a doll with a red gem affixed to its forehead. Supposedly, the curse of the Tails doll is that if you beat Sonic R completely, the Tails doll will jump out of your TV or spontaneously appear and kill you. <laughs> the song Can You Feel the Sunshine in reverse composed by Richard Jakes uh, and now it, by don't, TJ don't Jakes, pull a Blair Witch on me accounts of the dog. If you take one step deeper into the rumor than the surface of the creepy tale, you will discover that you have found an urban legend. Uh, and what's the urban legend? What is it? Oh! Pokemon Creepy Black. Of, of course, of course Pokemon was going to make an appearance. I would honestly be shocked if it didn't. Well, it already did, but I remember, remember playing a mod like this on a Game Boy that on a Game Boy thing that I got from Thailand. A cartridge, cartridge, yeah. This creepypasta is about a bootleg Pokemon game. When starting up the game, nothing seems to be out of the ordinary. You get your typical Professor Oak speech, name yourself, and then go to Oak's lab to get your first Pokemon. Instead of just Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle, the player has the option to pick a fourth Pokemon called Ghost. Ghost is only level one, with one move, Curse. How original. The sprite of Ghost is also the same sprite as the ghosts you would normally see in Lavender Town. When going into battle with Ghost, no Pokemon could attack it. The game would say that they were too scared to move. The uh -huh. ghost would use curse, the screen would go black, and the cry of your opponent's Pokemon would be heard. When the battle screen would return, the defending Pokemon would be gone, implying it had died. Once the player defeated the Elite Four, the game would fast forward many years later to an old man in Lavender Town, <laughs> which is supposedly an older version of the player. The game would then enter battle mode, where the player must fight with ghost, Ghost would eventually win, killing the player. The game would then shut itself off and reset. Can you nod with the flashing lights? Thank you. NES Godzilla. Godzilla. It details the events of what happens to a Godzilla fan who happened to gain a copy of NES Godzilla. The story begins with the player explaining how he recently bought an any Gazora and was looking for a copy of Godzilla to relive some nostalgic memories. Mothra! As he recalls his accounts of the game, the story goes Mugura. from some odd experiences to a truly unnerving tale. Oh, that's nauseating. Experience, he screenshots a key image that the game has to offer. Such as weird and creepy looking enemies. I don't remember that from a Godzilla so series. Gigan! He ended up putting Ghidorah. it on eBay. And it's somewhere out there. Where someone now can even play this disturbing game. Yeah. Evil Auto Berserk. Yes, Berserk. In the 1980s. There was an arcade cabinet called Berserk. It was made and spawned a bit of controversy. Apparently, two people died at the ripe young ages. After oh, there's even newspaper articles. This, of course, was after they were able to post their high scores on the game cabinet. Now, as the story goes, Otto is one of the most evil characters in gaming history, as named by several different sites. The humanoid so must not escape. Player die. Isn't that what he says? A smile on his face. However, Otto got his name from one of the developer's bosses, which is Otto, who used to chew people out on the job with a shit-eating grin on his face still. Now, rather this cabinet is cursed, or if it's just coincidence, Berserk and Evil Otto has made its mark on creepy gaming history. There you go. Yeah, that wasn't even necessary. You just did that to scare me. Mario. <laughs> Just straight up Mario. Mario is a creepypasta about a strange hack that is completely surrounded in mystery, even to this day. 
The first user to try it reported that the compressed RAR file, simply named Mario, was very limited. He found a text file with nothing but nonsensical characters, a single repeated phrase, find me. The game itself was not in a format that was available to play. After some adjustments, he managed to explore the chilling tale. When he started playing, he noticed some things out of the ordinary. For example, the opening message was altered. There was no enemies in sight, and no music was playing. While going through the levels, each one became less colorful, and message boxes quoting spiteful messages about Mark. Oh. Many have speculated that the end of the short title is a representation of Mario's suicide and descent into a hell of his own making. Uh. All in all, it makes for an unnerving experience. When a player beat one of the castles, a message appeared highlighting some gruesome details about uh. the victim. Eyeballs were unable to be found. There. When someone else on the forum returned to decode the text file, they discovered that it was instead an image. When they converted the text file to a JPEG, they found a frightening image. No one is entirely sure what oh. it was meant to represent. If the image was indeed a murder victim or a joke Easter egg, the answer remains a mystery. How much time is left? Olivius. Uh, yes. The angry video game nerd actually made a Halloween episode of this. And let me tell you, it was a properly well done scare video. Olivius is a theory that states that in the arcade age, there used to be an arcade cabinet called Olivius. <laughs> People wanted to play this game so badly that they formed lines and even fights broke out over it. But why did the people of Portland, New Oregon want to play this game so badly? According to the Creepypasta, what? it is said that this was a part of a series of experiments done by the government in the same vein as MK Ultra. Some of the side effects of playing this game Whoa. was close to that of LSD, which were night terrors, Whoa. Ah, oh and my gosh! Or became anti-gaming activist after playing it. But the story does not end there. The arcade owners claim that men in black suits came into the arcade and collected data from the cabinets. This has led people to theorize that the government may have had a large involvement. It is not that far off either, because the government made a deal with Atari, the makers of Battle Zone, to help them make a special version to help them train troops months before Polybius came out. <laughs> imagine that. Imagine, imagine a soldier training on Atari. <laughs> like a fighter jet. And just shooting through a load of lines. <laughs> the possibilities are actually pretty endless. Was River Raid, River Raid actually a simulator? All right. Which just adds to the possibility of government involvement. This theory has many aspects to it, such as Polybius has been in the Simpsons TV series. Yep. And the other possible theories that surround this game. Well, it just makes you think. It certainly has for many. Lavender Town Syndrome. When the first copies of Pokemon Red and Green came out in Japan, wow! Look at those original covers. The game would be rushed to the hospital, and some would apparently commit suicide. This was because of a certain musical theme that played when the player would reach Lavender Town, a dark town with a tower full of graves. The original Lavender Town theme music was an MIDI that was run on two channels called a binaural effect, so that children wearing headphones would hear one thing out of one ear and one out of the other. The two would theoretically combine in the brain to form a unique sound, 
The way the theme's multiple channels ran together, many children in the rain. What is this? Received migraine headaches. Eventually, it led to four deaths in children wearing headphones for an extended period of time. These deaths were caused by brain swelling, a heart attack, and two pain induced suicides. Quick action by Nintendo Corporation and Game Freak got the product recalled within hours of the news. They dithered the track, making it single toned. The problems caused by an unexpected psychological effect have not occurred since. So the real story behind this was the Lavender Town theme had high pitch in some of its notes that kids with their ears were more likely to hear, but el elder people were less likely to hear. So it's been ripe for theories like this, but uh, of one one beat in another and one beat in the other, that's really pushing it for the Game Boy's capabilities, wouldn't you think? Next, number of death. Red Dead Redemption. And how about that? How fitting. Red Dead Redemption by Rockstar has some very creepy and deep quests and things that make you think. Red Dead Redemption has a few theories and some pretty creepy aspects about it. So let's start with a seemingly innocent newspaper that informs the player. The abandoned town of Tumbleweed may be haunted. And after a personal exploration of the mansion, I've heard some creepy things, such as footsteps. You have. And a door that closes and opens upon itself. I've seen some creepy shadows and a weird tethered up skinny horse, as well as a few coffins in the basement. Could there have been a murder here? Maybe there's some more to this story than we thought. Upon further investigation, the church's lights are left on at night. On the altar, there's a statement written on the wood. The devil has gotten into the beast. Again, there must be more to what meets the eye in this creepy town, but we've barely scratched the surface of what this game has to offer, so we must move on. Now at this point, if you do not want spoilers, then end the video. For those of you who don't mind, then let's begin. Well... It's been a it's been a few years, okay? Well, more than a few, actually. But Red Dead Redemption Two is out, believe it or not. <laughs> actually, you would. That itself is old news. There is a side quest in the game that is given to you by a mysterious stranger. Abraham Lincoln. You. This is important because all score, score and several jump John scares Oscar ago. Is gunned down in a heart wrenching way, and after that's over, you can see the graves of John's wife. John's uncle and John Marston himself. Three bullets, three graves. Makes you think, doesn't it? What the heck? Still a good game, though. Sonic.exe. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Uh, .exe is one of the most famous and scariest creepypastas known among the gaming community. The story starts off with the player Tom receiving a disc from his friend Kyle, who he had not heard from in several weeks. It also contained a note saying, Destroy the disc. I, I couldn't get him. He's too fast for me. But due to being too big of a Sonic fan to let go of the disc, he proceeds to play it, allowing his worst nightmares to come into fruition. The first thing he notices is when the first second hey. of the start. A twisted image of Sonic is seen with a dark gray sky and a blood red lake with the writing Sega 666. Ah, how, how nice, Sega. You were able to get a game going in the year 666 AD before even games were a thing. In the lower right hand side, as it continues, Sonic torches a player taunting him with in-game levels, text, and gory dismemberment of poor woodland animals. Yeah. The game Sonic.exe also has a fan-made port, which just looks How does it feel, Dr. Robotnik? It's also the video game. Ah. But no known copy of the actual Sonic.exe exists. <laughs> I don't know if you heard, but at the very end, you could hear him say something like, or 
or does it? However, some things have changed with Sonic.exe. I heard it got, it got taken off the creepypasta wiki or something like that. But yeah, the creator? Yeah, it was taken off the creepypasta community. And moved to the trollpasta wiki. But this guy who made it, JC the Hyena, he was always a controversial figure within the creepypasta community. He had a big ego, an inability to take criticism, and had huge temper tantrums on social media. And um, and even Trollpasta Wiki got shut down in 2018. But then in 2021, right now, uh, a few, just a year ago, uh, several current and former Sonic.exe fans came forward and alleged that he had been taking part in sexual role plays with them while they were still underage. This combined with the revelation that JC had been emotionally abusing his at the time girlfriend and making her believe that such actions were normal. His attempted comeback with another username and later actions including hijacking, like uh, hacking another Discord account only served to sour both his his and the story's reputation to the general public. <sighs> what the hell, man? What the hell? So, Sonic.exe had a bit, a lot more sinister things going on behind it, but it wasn't a joke. It was not. Earthbound. Earthbound, yeah. Earthbound has a massive fan base. Oh yeah. It's apparent why. This NES game is considered a masterpiece by its fans, with fun, witty writing, a lovable cast of characters, and its innocent, loving world, right? And how? Well, that's until you get to the Gygas boss. At first you may notice that you're walking up to this random set of tubes, but after further inspection, it looks a lot like a woman's uterus. Ugh. This in itself is a rather huge change to the cute setting and the characters we are used to. But what we have seen so far is not even the worst to come. The boss Gygas is freaking scary as hell compared to the rest of the world. Now yeah. we inspect it further. The negative space of the boss actually looks like a fetus, hmm. and there is a reason for that. After an interview with the head developer of Earthbound, he said when he was a child, he went to a movie theater and walked in on the wrong movie. The movie he walked in on was none other than The Policeman and The Dismembered Beauty. According to the dev, this scared him, and it gave him the idea for this game. Mm -hmm. Even earlier in the game, you may notice that there is a part of Earthbound where Ness is attacked by police officers. This actually mirrors a case in America, where police brutality was frequent and common. And still pretty frequent and common today, as we saw in 2020. Just saying. Overall, the guy gas being an aborted fetus and all the creepy imagery that is seen is supposed to tell the tale of how Ness and the developer lost their innocence as a child so early on by being thrown into a cruel and unjust world. This is why it continues to scare gamers to this day. And how. And finally, the number one creepypasta. Ben Drowned. Ah, uh, yes. The Ben Drowned Creepypasta has a unique feature. Whoa, that is trippy. This creepypasta has actual footage of the game and a story that connects the videos together. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. The footage of the glitchy and messed up Nintendo 64. The creepypasta explains the player's reactions and how he felt with the haunted Matura's Mask cartridge. This is by far one of the scariest creepy pasta ah, ah. with its format of WMV and WMV? the tell if it's fake or not, as well as the overwhelming evidence that suggests it's real makes it extremely hard to tell. Another fact that adds more realism to this creepypasta 
is that if you ask Clip, oh, he gosh. knows what happened to Ben. Sometimes he responds with Ben drowned or other generally creepy things. This leaves and begs the question, was oh. that cartridge really cursed? Did Ben really drown? What do you think? Really out there today. What do you think? It's for you, the reader, to decide. decide. Yeah. That's why it makes our list. Decide. 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 Not looking. Not looking. You can't make me. We at Tats Top Videos would like to wish all of you a happy, safe, but mostly scared filled Halloween. <sighs> there you go. And I wish exactly the same. So. So there you have it, ladies and gents. That was a react video. And what a ride it was. It also brought back a lot of memories for me in 2014. Congratulations, everyone. You achieved great things back then. And you still do now. So everyone, have a good Halloween, and I'll be uploading something else created by these guys. Something just as creepy, just with the gaming part taken out. So, have a good night everyone. See you next time.